Welcome to Wealthwise Wednesdays. My name is Karen McGill. Excuse me. Today, I want to talk to you about the history of credit cards. And to do so, I've got a bunch of notes here, which is why I'm wearing my glasses, so I can read them. Now, what we see as credit cards started in the 1920s when, let me get this right, department stores and oil companies started issuing these metal charge plates and courtesy cards to their customers so that customers could charge purchases. And this, by the way, this information is coming from Pain with Plastic, a book by David S. Evans and Richard Shmolinisi. I will include it in the link so you guys can look it up if you're interested. But anyways, as I was saying, these cards is what we'd currently consider, you know, store credit cards. Because you could only use them at the department store or that oil company. You couldn't use them elsewhere. So that's where it started. In 1950, Frank McNamara launched the Diners Club card to be used in restaurants. Now, former Diners Club executive Maddie Simmons wrote a book called The Credit Card Catastrophe. And he reports in there that McNamara said that someday restaurants all over New York will honor this card. Yeah, that happened. Um, what would happen is, is that people would come in or use the card at a restaurant and charge it. And then at the end of the month, they'd pay the bill off. So it wasn't, you didn't have revolving balances then. But by its first anniversary, and this is great, they had 42,000 members and very few competitors. And by 1953, it became the first internationally accepted charge card. Hey, that's pretty good, you know. First of its kind, three years, it's internationally accepted. Hey, I'd like to see that kind of growth. But, and they didn't have any real competition for another five years. In 1958, the Bank of America started launching the card, but they was only in California. It was, hmm, da, da, da. It was the first card to be accepted by different types of merchants, not just restaurants and travel and entertainment outlets like the Diners Card and a few others were accepted at. But like I said, it was only in California. Now, Bank of America, this is interesting. They introduced the card with an unforgettable and incredibly expensive publicity stunt. They mailed 60,000 already activated Bank of America credit cards. Or Bank of America, Bank of America card, credit cards, they were called, to its customers in Fresno, California. This has became known as the Fresno Drop. And can you predict what was going to, what happened with that? Got any ideas? Why it became so expensive? Yeah, fraud. Um, delinquencies. People just used them and didn't pay them. Other people probably stole them out of mailboxes. It was okay. Uh. Cost the bank millions of dollars, but they didn't give up. They kept going, and by 1961, they had their first operating net profit. So that's the way to take a failure and just keep going, right? So, and ooh, by 1966, five years after that, Bank of America started issuing licenses its cards to banks in other states so they weren't just California Central at that time. In 19, 
Oh, okay, we're going to jump ahead 20 years. In 1986, Sears introduced this Discover Card, which offered consumers a small rebate on all their purchases, making it one of the first cashback cards in the, U in the U.S. So that started that thing. I'm always careful about when you get all these extras on your cards, like cash back or travel points or whatever, because you gotta watch those interest rates. You gotta decide whether it's really worth it to you to do that. There's another point here I read that I really wanted to say here. Bank of America card eventually became Visa, which then spun off from Bank of America. Just something that you might be interested in. Uh, Master Charge later became MasterCard. No, no, no. And these, two, two, two. Okay, and then they started being accepted worldwide, and people started getting into debt. That's why you had people like me. But, okay, um, now, as the credit card industry grew from thousands of member cardholders to millions, uh, a lot of things like, now here's where the banks and that made their money. And where I guess you could say it was kind of, how do you put it? I'm not going to say that they hoodwinked the public, because the public is just as so much to blame. But details about you know what the credit interest rate really was actually meant remain murky i mean a lot of people don't realize that it's compounded daily and that's a lot of figuring out i mean i use online cal calculators to figure out what it would be and did you know that women generally couldn't qualify for a credit card without a male co-signer Now that sounds, I know it sounds so sexist, but then again, when you think about it, a lot of times back then, men were the ones that were making the money, not women. So I guess they had their reasons for doing that. And now, let's see. Oh, here's another, a 1961 book written by Hill, Hill L. Black, Buy Now, Pay Later, says that uh, in the wonderland of credit, the consumer is almost never told the cost of debt in terms of true annual interest. And that's right. Now we're lucky with the internet and all these calculators, we can actually work it out. But lenders, at least back then, used to use several different methods of calculating interest. And some of them were disguised, they really disguised really big rates, like cr criminal rates almost. And some quoted monthly rates, while others will quote yearly. You have to watch what you're doing. You have to pay attention. And of course, we've got all these laws that have come out since then to try to protect the consumer. Nowadays, though, instead of using the plastic cards, many consumers are now using their smartphones. About three in four consumers with a debit card or checking account and smartphone have made a mobile payment at least once in the past 12 months, according to a 2016 study. Many more are using credit cards to make purchases online without ever dipping or swiping the cards. Hey, Amazon, eBay, well, eBay, I use PayPal, but Amazon, and personally, I've used my credit card online a lot. It's kind of scary at times because people can get your number, but I keep a very close watch on my credit card balance and what's being charged. So, now, Frank McNamara, could you think he saw all this coming? Did he, do you think he could see where his little diner's cup, what it would all inspire? I doubt it. I doubt it. 
He sold his Ecuadorian club in 1952. And he predicted that the company would peter out at 250,000 members, last for a while, then disappear like the zoot suit. <laughs> Again, according to Simmons. But more than 60 years later, Diners Club, now part of Discover, is still around. And the industry it inspired continues to grow. So there's a little bit on the history of credit cards. I got this article, by the way, from Nerd Wallet. Uh, I'm going to mispronounce her name too. Claire Tuss Tossi? I will include a link to it so you can look it up and you can read all of it. But that's it for Wealthwise Wednesdays for today, January. What is the date today? 16th? Hang on. Just now, let me check. Okay, well, it's either the 16th or the 17th. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next week with another Wealthwise Wednesdays. Take care and be money smart.